Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics video series on group theory. In this video, I'm going to talk about finite group groups and cyclic groups. So most cyclic groups are finite groups, and they're some of the most important and fundamental cyclic groups. Cyclic, cyclic groups are groups G uh, with multiplication operation, I'll just be writing concatenation, uh, in which there's some pri privileged element A such that every B this is the for all symbol I've seen even before. Every B and G uh, is uh, can be reached by repeatedly multiplying A or the inverse of A uh, with itself some finite number n of times. Um, uh, in cases where it's a finite group, it turns out that. Uh, a inverse will, will have to be some uh, positive power of A, and so if it's finite, uh, you just have um, it being a power of A. Now, this is equivalent to the condition that there is a surjective homomorphism from the integers to the root G, in which the element 1 in the integers, which is not the identity because the integers are under addition, so the identity, identity there is 0, such that the element 1 gets sent to the privileged element A. Um, the, the, the associativity and uh, commutativity of these powers uh, is the same sort of structure as the addition that the integers have, um, where uh, if this group is finite, it's the same structure but, but collapsed in a natural way, which is equivalent to uh, the taking of quotient groups. Uh, so an, infi an, an infinite cycle group will always look like G, and this homomorphism phi will, al will always have the trivial kernel, where the kernel is only 0 in G. If uh, G is if G is finite, then then the kernel of phi has to be some subgroup of z. Um, since z is abelian, all of its subgroups are normal and are thus uh, eligible to be kernels of homomorphisms. But the only subgroups of z are, um, uh, are, are the sets of integers which are all multiples of some integer. So this, this is written nz, where n is the integer that everything in there is a multiple of. So you would have, say, 3z. And thus, um, every cyclic group is going to look like um, is going to look like the quotient of uh, z by some nz uh, from the first isomorphism theorem. We have this. Like this diagram that we saw in the previous video. So if we look at z modulo 3z, right here, So, so 3z is going to be the set of all integers divisible by 3, and the cosets of 3z are going to be 0 plus 3z, 1 plus 3z, and 2 plus 3z, because every element of the integers is either a multiple of 3, a multiple of 3 plus 1, or a multiple of 3 plus 2. Um, and so uh, often this is just written 0, 1, and 2, with the operation being addition modulo 3, um, which can sometimes be written as a plus subscript 3. And so, th uh, so th the addition table for this would look like would look like this, where um, everything is as normal except that one plus two is zero instead of three, and two plus two is uh, one instead of four equals three plus one. Of course. Um, even though all cyclic groups have to be, have to be isomorphic to uh, something that looks like uh, a z mod nz, say z mod 3z, they don't have to look like that on the surface. For example, the, 
a subgroup of the rationals or reals under multiplication. One and negative one under multiplication. That's a cyclic group of order two, where one is the identity and negative one times negative one is one. Uh, so this is going to be isomorphic to z modulo 2z, which looks like 0 plus 1 under addition, which is called addition modulo 2, where 1 plus 1 is 0 instead of 2. Uh, we can have a more abstract uh, setting. I say 0 a, a squared a cubed uh, under um, a multiplication where everything is natural except that a to the fourth is identified with zero, uh, which would actually be e uh, or one for a multiplicative group, sorry. Um, so a to the four is equal to e and then a, a squared times a to the three, it would be a to the fifth, but instead since a to the four equals e, it's just, it just a again. Uh, and so this is going to be uh, isomorphic to z mod four z, which is uh, the z mod the subgroup of all elements which are divisible by four. So it's important that uh, all cyclic groups are going to be abelian uh, in that um, because uh, group operations are associative, if we have a to the uh, n times a to the k, um, if we say that k is bigger than n, then we have a to the n, a to the k, So because z is associative, uh, or the group has to be associative, the a, the, e each instance of a can be moved from one power over to the other, uh, w w which, lets you, which lets you switch the total powers, uh, powers back and forth between them, and so the group has to be abelian. So when I said earlier that a cyclic group um, is, is generated by a privileged element, that means that, well, it, 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 it's, the, it, it's the same thing. Uh, since if the, the, the cyclic group it has all its elements expressible just in terms of A. So the set that contains just A generates this cyclic group. Uh, that, that's the formal term for it. Um, if the cyclic group has size n, um, again, A to the n has to equal the identity of the group uh, for a finite cyclic group of size n, uh, because otherwise, um, if a to a smaller and if a to a smaller power had to equal the equal the identity, then um, a to the everything above that would be already accounted for, and thus the group could grow no larger. Whereas if a to the n didn't equal the identity, then um, you could you, you you could put more powers in beyond a to the n. Um, so uh, what we say here is that the element a has order n. And this is, it, it's, uh, calling this the order of the element A is valid even for groups which aren't cyclic groups. Uh, for example, um, uh, it, like it, it, in, in, just nor, in, in just any group G, and there, Say G has an addition rather than a multiplication as its operation. A has order three in this case. Uh, so additionally, the generation of groups by, uh, the generation of cyclic groups by a, cycl by a single element can be extended even to not cyclic groups. Uh, if a group is not cyclic, but it contains some element, then that element will generate a cyclic. That then that element will generate a cyclic subgroup, which is just the smallest subgroup of, the, of G that contains that element. Um, and every element in that subgroup, which is it will be expressible as a power of the of the element of the distinguished element for that subgroup, um, which will just look like the the um, the general representation I've been using for cyclic subgroups thus far. In a not cyclic group, the order of any element has to divide the order of the whole group. Um, and in fact, the order of any subgroup has to divide the order of the whole group because uh, all the cosets of a subgroup have to be the same size. And 
the subgroup generated by an element uh, is going to be of the same order as the element is itself. Because uh, if, if a is of order uh, 3, then you get uh, 0, a, a plus a, uh, but then a plus a plus a is 0 again, and so you've, you only manage to get three, just three unique elements just with a. So a group which isn't cyclic obviously has to be generated by more than one element. Uh, for an example, we can look at a group called the four group, which is written V4, or Fiere group. Um, this, th this has elements column E, A, B, and AB, and it's a uh, multiplication table or multiplication table. Um, that's proper. We did that. Uh, each element is of order two, but the whole group is of order four. Um, so the element A just generates the subgroup containing E and A, whereas the element B can, generates the subgroup containing uh, B and E. Um, but, the, but the set AB generates the whole subgroup because uh, AB can be written in terms of A and B. Uh, but also the set A and AB generates the whole subgroup because uh, B can be written as A times AB, since A times A is the identity. Um, this non-uniqueness of generating sets also uh, happens for cyclic groups. If we have um, Z mod 6Z, which we'll write as uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then under this group's addition, 5 plus 5 is 10, which uh, you subtract a 6 from that because 6 is identified with 0. The, this gives you 4, and then 5 plus 4 is 3. This is a 3. 5 plus 3 is 8, goes to 2. 5 plus 2 is 7, goes to 1. 5 plus 1 goes to 0. So 5 can be added to itself repeatedly to generate all the elements in Z mod 6Z. And so 5 is also a generator of Z mod 6Z. And, and it, it can do this just by itself. It doesn't have to, be, uh, gen it doesn't have to generate it in a set with 1. Um, in general, any element which is co-prime to the order of a cyclic group will generate that cyclic group. Uh, for this one, 2 doesn't generate it because 2 plus 2 equals 4. 2 plus 4 equals 0. And 2 plus 0 equals 2. So you can only get 2, 4, and 0 by repeatedly adding 2 to itself. Uh, and that's not the whole group. 2 generates the subgroup, um, 2, 4, 0, which is, uh, sorry, I dropped my chalk, can be referred to as just the subgroup generated by 2 uh, in Z mod 6D. Uh, so in, in particular, any group which is uh, any cyclic group of prime power order, so this is going to be Z mod PZ for some prime, every element in that subgroup will generate that subgroup because um, if they didn't, then they would have to generate some sort of subgroup that wasn't of order one because it, can, it can't be the trivial group uh, and, it can't be, and it can't be of uh, order P uh, because that's the whole group and we're saying that it can't divide group. Uh, but, it ha but the order of the subgroup it generates has to divide the order of Z mod PZ, which is P, and it can't do that unless it generates a subgroup of order 1 or P because P is prime. Uh, so uh, it turns out that uh, groups of the form Z mod PZ, uh, cyclic groups of prime order, tend to be pretty useful uh, in lots of uh, algebraic disciplines, even other than group theory. And I'll start explaining some of that more in the next video. Thank you for watching this video in our series on group theory. Click down there to view our playlist containing the rest of the videos in this series. Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can not miss any more of our Center of Math videos. And click here to visit our website to check out more of our mathematics resources.